welcome to SVG TV News for May 7th, 2019. I am Investor Boynes with the details. Access to finance is a challenge which hinders the growth of small to medium enterprises here and one institution is introducing a project to assist these enterprises. Today, Invest SVG launched its pilot project, Business Angel Investment. Executive Director Annett Marks said small to medium businesses are known for their positive impact on economic and social variables. She said they are confident that the programs under the Business Angel Investment Project will have positive impact on small businesses. Angel investing is defined as the practice of high net worth individuals investing their personal time money and expertise in an early stage in early st into early stage businesses in which they have no family connection with the aim of helping those businesses to grow and realize a financial return on their investment in the long term it also involves providing access to influential networks business angels typically take a more active role in businesses than the traditional private investor. In exchange for the, for the financial and intellectual investment in the firm, angels often require equity in the company and, and are therefore committed to the business and its success. Angel investing is often a favorable form of capital for seed and early stage enterprises Mark said while the project is new to SVG, many companies regionally have benefited from it. She said the project is a step towards the creation of a national investment policy. From St. Lucia, Trinidad and Tobago, Barbados, Dominican Republic, just to name a few. Business angel investors invest in, as do other forms of investment, local and foreign play a key role in understanding and thereby improving the local investment environment in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and will certainly help as Invest SVG takes the lead in developing a national investment policy and strategy. It is our expectation that, though, that through this and other such program, Invest SVG will be able to bring together all relevant stakeholders to share ideas towards an inclusive and robust investment ecosystem in for St. Vincent and the Grenadines. However, it should be noted that this is just the first step towards fostering a private ecosystem within our country, with business angel investing being a key part of that. Mark further stated that many small business operators will have the opportunity to register to be part of the project and maximize on its benefits. Winners will appear before the OECS angel investors who will hopefully find a business idea or ideas or an existing business that they can invest in. There can only be one winner though for the grand prize of 2000 US, but all four candidates will have an opportunity to pitch their ideas and could still attract the attention of an angel. During the period between the selection and the final, candidates will have an opportunity for training to be hosted by Invest SVG, which will prepare them for the finals and possibly for the preliminary rounds. However, this, the latter is dependent on scheduling. This is a very exciting project for us and we are looking forward to working with some key stakeholders and individuals over the next five months or so. There will also be, this will also, this will allow for the building of synergies and relationships with the main purpose of contributing our efforts to the development of our SMEs, economic growth in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and the empowering of persons within our society. There is a lot of potential for the creation of a vibrant and sustainable agriculture industry and Chief Agriculture Officer Ashley Kane is encouraging the youth to get involved in the industry. This advice comes as the government signed a $4 million US dollar agreement yesterday with the Republic of China on Taiwan which aims to revitalize the banana industry. Kane said SVG has many blessings and challenged the youth 
to use their education to unearth the potential of agriculture. We have a potential in our country for viable, sustainable industry that I would want our young people learn the science, learn the business, learn the other dimensions of it and so on. As a consequence of which, we would make banana be a very good word in people's mouth again. What do you think, Minister? And uh, with the support of our Taiwanese friends, I think we can do a very good thing in rebuilding, strengthening, and developing an our a banana industry and other kinds of enterprises that will allow us to have strong and vibrant rural areas and throughout St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Minister of Agriculture Sabota Caesar said the industry continues to show great potential as a regional supplier of agricultural produce. He said one area where SVG has shown this potential is in cattle production and encouraged more farmers to get involved in the process. I must commend the staff of the Ministry of Agriculture for doing a lot of hard work and we are seeing the successes every day. If the Ministry of Agriculture, if we were not doing a lot of hard work, persons from other country want to come here to buy so much cattle, it would have never happened. So much so that we are on the verge of seeing emerge before our very eyes one of the largest cattle industries in the Caribbean. That is what we are working on. Because some persons say, the minister sending away all the cattle. Well, <laughs> the minister is happy that we have a market for the cattle. And the ministry, we are encouraging more persons to get into cattle production so that we will be able not only to provide for ourselves at home, but we can serve the different markets in the OECS and in CARICOM. That is the target. Caesar said the industry is also seeing growth in non-food areas such as flowers and biopesticides production. I want to also since we're on the issue of agriculture, update the nation that there is a Kalalili project where some 20,000 plants were produced by the Tissue Culture Lab in Orange Hill and are now going to be available in the next few months because we're looking for an export market for these flowers from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And that we are looking to export biopesticides and biofertilizer produced with your assistance. The Vector Control Unit is educating the youth on the dangers mosquitoes can have on their health and what they can do to prevent their spread. Members of the unit on Monday visited five primary schools on the leeward side of the island to conduct health education sessions as part of their Mosquito Awareness Week. The week of activities is being held under the theme, Small Bite, Big Threat. Throughout the week, members of the Vector Control Unit will conduct several awareness exercises to get the public more on board with its effort to eliminate mosquito breeding sites. At the educational sessions on Monday, the students learned more about the life cycle of mosquitoes and their threat to human health. Speaking from the Spring Village Methodist School Environment Health Officer Shamanti Laban, said the destruction of mosquito breeding sites should be a priority as there is no vaccine for many of the mosquito-borne diseases. She said it is their hope that the knowledge passed on to the students can inspire a generation of environmentally conscious individuals. As you know, children, they are impressionable in terms of their minds and um, they can also take on the information to their parents and so on. And they, they like to more or less correct you at times um, if they see their parents here doing something or they can go home and tell their parents 
their families. Okay, I've learned this in school. So there are media or medium in which to communicate the information to adults. And um, children, you know, they are more impressionable and it's easier for them to um, be more receptive to the information, you know, and help in the fight against mosquito-borne diseases. And in addition to that, um, I'd just like to make mention that um, we would have targeted these extremes of the country in St. Vincent because a number of work has been done in other areas. So we're just trying to target the rural schools and the rural areas. And that's not to say that we would not be um, having health education sessions and so on in the, um, in, the, in the urban schools. But the initiative will continue, but just not for the mosquito. To week, but it will be continued throughout um, the year. Inspector with the Vector Control Unit Chantal Hazel said today's youth need to be more aware of their environment and what is in it. She highlighted some of the concepts taught to the students. The students today have been very interactive. They have a quite knowledge of what we are about. Basically, we try to break down the basic concept of vector control. The reason why we're out there showing good vectors, whether rats, roaches, but our main focus was on mosquitoes. And we taught them the containers to look for around their community, the signs, the stages of the mosquitoes, what the mosquitoes breed, the diseases, and the effects of the mosquitoes. The young generation these days need to be more aware of their surroundings. Meanwhile, some of the students shared with our news team what they learned from the exercise. That mosquito really many sides, like in garbage bins and old tires and in your garden, buckets and, and I learned plenty of things. They learn about the mosquitoes and the eggs. What the mosquitoes when, when they are biting and chicken beetles. They learn cheese stages of mosquitoes. That's got in water. Wanna eggs, lava and pupa. I learn about that when they cannot live without water. And the love of the pupa and the eggs need water to, to live until they, until they turn into the adult. And I learned that adult only breeds to air. I think you're going to take it to like to your friends, your family, your neighbors, you're going to teach them what they, they taught you today. Yes. The incidents have the potential to overwhelm medical emergency staff and members of various organizations such as the National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO. The Ministry of Health and the RSVG Police Force who have been sharpening the skills of their staff to deal with such incidents. Over 70 emergency personnel from first responders to senior public servants were trained last week in various areas through the Incident Command System Emergency Operations Workshop. Cindy Pierre Charles, an instructor and staff nurse, told the Ministry of Health Communications Officer Nika Anderson Isaacs that the exercise goes a long way in preparing emergency personnel for a mass casualty incident. She highlighted some of the areas covered under the training exercise. Casualty training in terms of respond, how the different systems and civilians respond, how would police, how would fire, how would health, all the different sectoral, even the non-governmental organization, how we would come together to deal with a mass casualty that would affect St. Vincent and the Grenadines or even just a community on its whole. So it does, del, deals with scene assessment, um, safety and security, incident command. 
response, um, how do you triage your patients, how you tag them, how you transfer them to different areas, and how you contact all areas to alert that there is a mass casualty and how you respond. So it's a lot, the alerting process and how each sector would come together to, to play that out. And do you feel if there is a mass casualty at this moment that the team would be ready to respond? We would be more than ready to respond. Even the new students that are now being trained would be ready to respond to a mass casualty if there is one. The fire department plays an important role in mass casualty incidents and Corporal Kerwin Ince said the department is always retooling their staff with the necessary training to handle any eventuality. It is understood, I think, by now, that when we talk about safety, we are not singling out any particular department or section within Vinlec, because on some level, everyone here is exposed to some form of workplace. Environmental Health and Safety Officer Anthony Patterson has made it clear that safety is no accident and should never be taken for granted. In his remarks at the launch of Vinlex Environmental Health and Safety Awareness Month of Activities last Friday, Patterson said that though it is often being said, leave everything in the Lord's hand. Everyone has to plan and put measures in place to protect themselves against hazards. It is understood, I think, by now that when we talk about safety, we are not singling out any particular department or section within Vinlex because on some level, Everyone here is exposed to some form of workplace hazard. So as we go through, have gone through the years, and as we go through another year for our, of our safety program, we are trying to reach all our staff. In addition to the fact that safety is really a team effort, and those of us who are in more vulnerable areas or, or who are more exposed to certain hazards, uh, sometimes we need the encouragement or the reminder from the rest of the staff who may not be as exposed to help us to stay on track. As well as we need reminders, you know, when we think about our families whom we have to get, get back home to, uh, and all our friends and those who really care about us and have us in, in, in high regard. Patterson said that as he reflects on some of the accidents that happened last year, some could have been prevented if there was better teamwork. There were very, either, either very simple procedures or simple pieces of equipment or items. You might call them PPE or safety equipment or something that could have been utilized to prevent the accident from taking place. So, very simple item, a piece of rope. Could have prevented an accident. What's the cost of this piece of rope? Or a few yards of this piece of rope? Insignificant when you consider Vinlec. A piece of plastic, if properly worn, you know, protected, used according to manufacturer specs, can prevent tens or hundreds of thousands in medical expenses. Another piece of plastic, rubber, composite material, relatively inexpensive in terms of cost, can prevent hundreds of thousands of dollars in personal injury, medical expenses. The environmental health and safety officer said persons should also be more cautious on the job and that safety training sessions will equip workers with a better knowledge as to how to be safer in the workplace. Sometimes it doesn't take much and you might think that you are overstepping or you are you know, overdoing it, but think about the cost of not doing something that seems very simple. It can make a world of difference to someone, not necessarily you, be a co-worker, you can make a difference to that person, even a life and death one. 
So I just want to encourage us as we go through the safety month, safety awareness month once again, that we recommit ourselves to safety and recommit ourselves to the, the team effort that is required to make safety a reality in Vinle. God. Carnival Beat is coming right up. Soca artists across St. Vincent and the Grenadines have been preparing themselves for Vinci Mass 2019 and have been releasing new music. Many of them are hoping for a big break this year and to earn a stop in the National Soca Mona competition. Leroy Bentick is a young soca artist who goes by the stage name Splendid. He hails from Barley and has released two new songs thus far, Where You're Telling Me and Suzanne, mixed and mastered by a young producer also from Barley, JJ Master from Stars Studio. Splendid has been involved in music all his life and during his time at school took part in the National Junior Calypso competition. In 2016, he gained popularity with his hit song, Who Better Than We? Bentick told our news team at the launch of Vinci Mass 2019 at Carnival City Victoria Park last Saturday night that he feels good about his song, Where You Telling Me. Well, long as the crowd reacts to my music, is all fine with me you now. The crowd always reacts to my music. I like get big hit song like Who Better Than We? Probably you know about it. But I have a big hit, Who Better Than We? So, Bassanda is a big major song. Proud of his wristband for it. I did it like 2006, and it's big up to now, up to this day. The competition this year, well, I wanna do, I wanna put Way Telling Me in the competition. We ain't sure as yet because I have other major songs coming out still, so I ain't sure yet. But it's an overall thing for the young and the old. It's a job, job, job. Way Telling Me. Go get a little piece of it if you want to get a little piece of it. Did you know? You know what we say? Make it clear now. Make it clear now. Yo. Me come to party, me now come here so for watch no face. For my girl show back, she bump up on me, my walk she waste. If she get a man do tell me, can't come mash up this place. Me a dumb bad, me a dumb tipsy, so just give me space. Cause we not have no behavior. It's strictly back and all in this place, yeah. We drink it strong every time no chase, So nobody don't shout to we. What you telling me? You ain't a people woman, yeah. What are you telling me? Welcome to Soka Land. Yeah, you don't know. Journalist Kenville Fernando Horn, known as the Bamboo Man, has also recently released his hit song, No Soda, produced by Radio Vibes. Horn, who is employed with the Vincentian newspaper, hails from Rose Hall on the leeward side of the island. He has a passion for youth development and is part of a charity group for the youth. Horn told our news team he released his first soccer song in 2017 and he was happy with the response he received from the public, hence his return to the soccer arena this year. People would know, but we have a song out there, No Soda. And No Soda is currently doing well on the radio station, heavy rotation, and it's playing all over. Um, person who want to contact me could find me on Instagram at Fernando the Artist or uh, on Facebook Fernando Bamboo Man. 2017 I did the Bamboo Man and a lot of people embrace the song and a lot of people say yeah, you have to continue on the trend. So this year is all about no soda and my junk tail are fall over and me just want everybody to check it out, you know. Me love the vibes, me don't love the feedback already. You know, big up everybody who have been supporting me and for all those who don't know, now you know who sing this song, no soda. I am fun under the bamboo man, lord. Horn said he has his eyes set on making it in the National Soka Mona competition, but for now he is focused on promoting his music. Well, well, the thing is, I mean, I challenge myself to always improve. So if there's any challenges, it's from my perspective. Um, in terms of worrying about stuff, worrying about competition, I'm not really worried about anything much because, you know, most people know me. By journalism, I'm a journalist by profession, so most people know me by that. 
plus my charity works with youth a lot of people know me by that so these are the things i focus on it's just another challenge another aspect of my personality which is music and i just want to endorse the music so i don't feel challenged in no way you know it's a lot of work in terms of producing music producing good lyrics and if anybody listen no soda it's a lot of lyrics i drunk till i fall over till the party over i'm not drink soda so i'm not leave sober there's a lot of lyrics in the song so go and check it out there's a lot of hard work in that regard to produce good music for people because you want to make people happy so that's the only challenge i face to just make do good music for people Horn is encouraging the youth whose dream is to become great performing artists to stay positive and take their education very seriously, noting that having a good education will help them to write good songs. Holy faith, be determined, be confident. You know, there is a lot of obstacles out there that you would have to overcome. But if you stay humble, if you just keep pushing, have a, a, a good ears for good music, listen to the top artists, listen to the top, um, watch the top performances, and just just follow that trend. Listen to people who advice as well, because a lot of times people speak to the artists. Some people might tell you good, some might tell you bad. Just put everything together, come up with your own objective, come up with your own conclusion, and just go forward and push good music. Also, stay positive, you get a good education, because education is key to everything. Thing. A lot of artists want to sing, but if you're, not, if you're not educated enough to write a proper song, then you're going to depend on somebody to write your song for you. And that would cost you. You know, you might have a share in this point. But if you could do everything on your own, like for, write, for instance, writing your own song, then that's one cost you can cut and just, you know, go forward. So, artists, stay positive, big up yourself. All right.